Thank you for tuning in to this new interview series brought to you by the guys from the Still Nick Fans crew. Uh, this is an interview with your favorite content creator. Um, I hope you guys liked our first installment. We're coming back to you again with this this new weekly one. Uh, we're gonna try to uh, you know keep coming at you with 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 more and more content that we think you guys will love, um, and and hopefully you appreciate it, uh, the first installment. Uh, and and we're just gonna continue to keep growing. You know we've got a lot of ideas over at Still Nick Fans, and we hope you appreciate it. But let's get right down to it. So today, uh, our special guest is someone that uh, I have grown quite fond of. You know, I didn't know a lot about him to begin with when I first got into the whole content creation game on YouTube. Uh, being a part of the Nick community uh, was was very new and challenging for me as well as my co-host John. And so we were starting to really get to know uh, all the content that was out there. And there's so much, uh, and you know, the, we really didn't know everything, and you know, that was out there and what to expect. But as we were going through different things and looking at different channels, uh, you know, I guess uh, there were certain channels that stood out and and made a lasting uh, imprint on us. I'm gonna get a little bit more into to how I found out about um, this next person and his channel, um, but I will tell you this: uh, it is kind of a massive undertaking once 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 i tell you how much is going on with this channel it, it's it's really surprising okay uh first off let me just go down the list of shows all right we got the nick's morning drive we got the nick's at night podcast with uh this gentleman and I, I'll, I'll get back to him and city for real and others you've got nick's freestyle with free keith and the ghetto intellect you've got the nick's verses with uh, Woodshed 1914. You've got the pod couple with Sergeant Nicks, AKA G-Man and Cornerstone Kev. You got Old School Nicks with Anthony D. You've got NBA one-on-one -on -one with Staff of Don and Soul Finger 12. You've got Nicks After Party with Subliminal 209 and Cully. And this is just the shows that are happening right now, not even to mention the other stuff that, you know, who, who knows what maybe uh, being worked on behind the scenes and different things coming in the future. Like there's just so much going on on this network. Um, and, and let me tell you, this gentleman, uh, he's he's very like I, there's something about him that he just makes you feel comfortable. You know, he's he's uh, a person who has seen uh, the New York Nick franchise for for many years. So he has an historian part to his, to, uh, his makeup uh, while he also watches the Knicks currently and 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 looks at everything that's going on. So he kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And that's why some of these other shows that he's got on his network really, uh, you know, s dictate that and symbolize, you know, his makeup. You know what I mean? Like that. It all feels like it's a part of him. When you talk to him, you realize how all these shows kind of just you could tell they came from him. Oh, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce to you guys the uh, creator and 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 I he's the star of the show of the Lawrence Tears Network. This is Mr. Uncle Freezy. What's going on, brother? Hey man, how you doing this um this afternoon or this evening? I should say. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. Time is flying, man. Yeah, we're changing flying. up. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining me, man. I really appreciate having it's a you. Uh you know, uh, I, I'm I'm really uh, a big fan. You, you you obviously have have uh, seen me always uh, showing up and watching your shows and trying to be on to talk Nick stuff with you. But um, you know, part of the the intrigue for me is just you know the type of person you are, um, which we'll we'll get into a little bit more as as, as I go through my my uh, list of questions I have for you. But it's just like there there was a certain draw. To, to your content and, and who you are and it keeps me coming back. So I definitely appreciate the work you do and uh, I'm it. a big fan. Um, so let me get right into it, man. So I hope, I hope that, uh, you know, I, I don't hit you with too much, but you know, I, I'm going to try to keep it as, as short as possible, but there's no, so much information that I, bring it on. all bring right, it on. cool, cool. All yeah. right. <laughs> so um, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Okay, so um, I'm not really comfortable in front of a camera. 
right? Mm. But um, the the YouTube thing for me was more of a I, I saw a dear friend of mine, Simeon Russell, um, doing nothing but Knicks, right? right? And the circumstances behind it was was crazy because what happened is I had a, a little brother that was younger than me, you know, a few years younger than me. I think he was, he was, at the time was maybe 44, 45 years old. He was dying, right? And so what I would do is at night, I would sit in, the, in his ICU room with him and just to 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 quell my nerves i would just shop on ebay all night just blowing through money bro blowing through money right and and so the thing is the thing is 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 um you know i and so i had to i told myself i have to do something different so let me let me so as i sat right there and my little brother was fighting for his life i would search the internet for next content and i and i mean in my browser not even on youtube so I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, you know, I would, I went on, I searched Google, you know, for Knicks, and it would show all the Knicks stuff, right? And then it showed a YouTube thing, a YouTube clip, right? So I clicked on YouTube, and it was nothing but Knicks, right? <clears throat> so I watched this guy. Instead of watching um, Family Feud rerun, you know how you sit in the, in a in a room and it's like on cable, where they show the Golden Girls and. All these whatever's on TV. I started watching right. this guy, Simeon Russell. And so I saw all this text scrolling down the thing. And I was like, wow, are they commenting? And so I commented once. And then and then people responded to me like, hey, Uncle Freezy, good to see you back. And I was like, wow, this thing is this thing is neat. Mm-hmm. And and so um, while in the moment it didn't get me into the YouTube game there, it connected me to a family instantly, a Knicks family. I didn't know Knicks families existed. And right. I saw this guy on the screen, Simeon Russell. Listen, man, I know a nervous wreck when I see one. And he was a nervous wreck when I was looking at him. But he was he was cool with it. He was like, yeah, you know, I ain't nervous. Bro, I know you. I know you. I know you nervous, bro. I know you nervous. You know what I'm saying? So, so I was like, and and the the appeal to that, the appeal to that, made me realize this dude was a real person. You know what I'm saying? So, I was like, wow, this dude is a real person. Then he, I started seeing him have people in the video chat, and so, um, I can't remember who. I think it might have been um, who's Mark and. Um, Legion of Knicks, um, Guillermo from Legion of Knicks podcast, and a couple others. So I decided to jump on because while I'm not nervous about being on the camera broadcasting t- to YouTube, and, or um, while I'm nervous about that, you know, I had always been in, in business meetings, bro, where you do, you know, the video calls and, and meetings at work and all that stuff. And, you know, and, and I would be the point man for that, setting up the stuff and setting up the slides for the meetings and, and all that stuff, conference calls with, with people around the world. Because I work for a, a few big companies. I ain't gonna get mm-hmm. into, into the name of them because some of them some of them I enjoyed and some of them were whack. But you know, <laughs> you know, it, but but um so I jumped in the, the video chat with Sam from nothing but next one night. And I kind of enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed right. Not the, not just the, you know, I enjoyed the fact that this cat was a dude just like me, a dude with some business background, um, a dude with a passion for the Knicks, a dude with some tech savvy. Not, I see, I don't have a lot of tech savvy, but but I learn, I absorb stuff like a sponge, especially when motivated, you know. And so, I was like, you know what? I think I might be able to do this. And and so what I did was. I just sat there. I just apprenticed under Sim. I never mm. asked him a question about how he did stuff, right? That I just watched what he was doing on the screen, and and took mental notes and went back. You know, once we got off, I t- tried to figure it out on my own. I never mm. wanted to pin him down and say, "How'd you do this?" 
Mm -hmm. How'd you do that? Because, you know, because, you know, the internal, I didn't never wanted to give him the impression that, that I was going to take something from him and do something different. What I wanted to do is, is um, learn as we went along, you were old school apprenticeship, right. you old, old right. school apprenticeship to sit there and watch and watch right. and watch until you learn how to do things. And so um, one night we got into an argument, all of us, I think it was like seven of us. And it was like seven different points of view. Right. And, and Sims show, I'm nothing but Nick's in my opinion is like the Oprah Winfrey show in the very best way. Right. Mm -hmm. it, I'm, I'm saying that as a compliment to, to Simeon Russell for putting on a joint, like the Oprah Winfrey show. Right. But that night it was more like Ricky Lake. Right. And and it wasn't because he was I it, it wasn't because he couldn't control it. It was the, the because you had him and six different personalities that all disagreed. Right. And that night I couldn't get a word in because there were other people on the panel that were over talking me. So I couldn't get a word in. And I was right. so frustrated. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go out here tonight and start my own channel. So I can get my so I can get my word out there. Wow. And then and then plus and then plus, even though I, I love Simeon Russell and others, there are other Knicks content creators that, that I consider mentors, like uh, Jonathan Macri from Knicks Film School. I shout him out a lot because right. that's a that's a sharp young brother and he contribute to and he'll come on, on on our channel some also. But but the thing about it is, is that night I said, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to do my own joint. And I never wanted to be the Oprah Winfrey show, right? I always want one of my joints to be Jerry Springer, <laughs> right? I wanted people to come. I wanted to capture the raw emotion of people, right? Even in their foolish takes, like when people say say something foolish or whatever, I always wanted that to be not a represent not a representation of who I am and what I look to portray but the real feelings of real people in the moment. Okay. And so I, I started the channel. I started grinding with it, tinkering around with it. Um, I think I started the channel in, in um, the summer of 2019. Didn't know what to do with it. Shot videos, never went, I never went live. I just shot videos, put videos up, put videos up. And then in 2020, um, I talked to Sim. Sim talked to me about doing Sportscaster. And so I did Sportscaster. It was okay, but I felt limited. And, and one night I had so many tech issues between myself and Sportscaster. Like, you know what? I'm just going to take this to YouTube right now. No thought. I'm just going to gonna figure out YouTube right now, go live. And I told people that were watching, listen, I'm taking this to YouTube, y'all come with me, right? And um, what I did was I tapped into the, I tapped into the Twitter. Yes, I am one of the original and the, the historic Nick's Twitter thread at Big Freezy. That's me. Right. So I tapped into that crowd. I was like, hey, I'm doing this thing on YouTube. I want you all y'all to come with me. They laughed. They were like, hey, man, no, that's that's whack. That's going to be whack. And so what I did was not, nah, I was like, nah, bro, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it every night. I'm going to just come on the same time every night and talk Nick's content. Rain, sleet, or snow. 365 days of the year. And so I started on that journey. And fast forward to today, here we are. So, Uncle Freezy, you know, being that you started your uh, YouTube channel, how do you think it was in the beginning? Was it difficult, easy to transition? Um, so, the the transit the transition from being a conversational Knicks fan, 
like just seeing Knicks fans in the street and just having a conversation mm-hmm. to YouTube was easy. The technical part to it and the, the learning of the process was um, not difficult because you know what you need to do. You know that you need a logo. You know that you need to do thumbnails. You know that if you're going to talk about a specific thing, you have to have sourcing and slides to follow it up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so that part is is easy. Learning the the requisite skills to go along with may have been difficult at times. Um, like learning how to edit videos was, in my opinion, was difficult, right? Mm-hmm. And and um, learning how to to Photoshop was was difficult. Now it's easy. Now it's nothing. I'll Photoshop anything right now. But in the beginning, when you learn new new apps and things, it's, it's difficult. It was difficult. But the transition from being a conversational Knicks fan to YouTube was very easy. I realized in a process that I had a lot of pent up Knicks frustration. And so as soon as I clicked the go live button, I found a place where I can rest all of that Knicks frustration. And that place is YouTube. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And I understand what you mean about the editing. Editing is, uh, it's not my strong suit. I'm, I'm still working towards kind of figuring out how to, to get better at it every day. Um, so how long have you actually been on YouTube? How long has the channel been up? Um, on YouTube, uh, 12 months. So it's been a year on YouTube. Um, Got it. Were, um, were you somewhere Cajun, else prior to that? Yeah, Sportscaster. I was, I was on Sportscaster. Okay. For about a month. And um, so, and, and, you know, I use Sportscaster as a place to um, learn the grind. And then I moved from Sportscaster to YouTube. Uh, Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I know. Heard a lot about Sportscaster, but uh, I don't know something. Something changed over there. I don't know what what's going on over there. I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know what happened to them either. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in this in this Nick's space, I value being self sufficient. I try to do whatever, whatever I can do to get to an audience directly. I mm-hmm. prefer that, and, and so. And, and so it's it's one of those it's one of those deals where, um, you know, I left Sportscaster and shout out to those guys, you know, but I left Sportscaster and I, not, I never looked back. So when you did start, I know it sounds like from from what I'm gathering that you you basically just you just did it. Um, did you have any guidance or any help with, with creating the channel? Um. I think, yeah, I think, I think so. I had some, some, some guidance, but at the same time, um, when, when I jumped into this space, there were only a few, um, there were a few new channels. There were Legion of Knicks podcast had jumped on before, before I did. He was on for a, a few months before me. Um, and I used to watch and, you know, and look at what they were doing. Um, and then um, um, I would always ask Sim for um, advice about um, re- relativity, right? Not not the not the technical stuff, but you know I would ask him a question like, um, "So how how should we feel about Fisdale winning all these press conferences? Like like I feel a certain way, man. How do you feel about it?" And he would tell me how he felt about it. And and so I would get valued, my in my opinion, valued advice from somebody that was smart. And so what I would do with that would give me some balance so that I wouldn't overreact to what it is that I was seeing or lean mm. too far one way or the other. And, and so um, but in, in terms of the, the technical stuff, man, listen, you got to cut your teeth. You got to go out, try and fail, try and fail. And 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 that way, that way, you know, what I'm saying you can do it. You can because all of us do it differently. 
There are a lot of different platforms and things out here that help you, but you have to, you know, try and succeed at what you feel comfortable at. And, and right. to your to your point though, when when I started, there was nothing but Knicks, Knicks fan TV, um, Terry and Trey, um, um, CK two K, um, and Knicks Film School. And, and some others, but but the others they were new like like I was, so I didn't I didn't you know. But I I constantly watched those shows, and was like, hey, if I was to do that, what would I do here? Yeah, if I was to do that, would I do that differently? Right. And so my thing is, my thing is, is though I'm a very disciplined person. On YouTube, I don't want to be disciplined like that. I want to let my hair down. On, on YouTube. You know, is is I want I want the real I want the, the rawness and the the real feelings of Knicks fans to come through. I want passionate Knicks fans, you know, what I'm saying to come through, be on Lawrence tears, and 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 share their opinion. I want it to feel like a basketball game, right? Like if we were in a crowd, if we had a section unto ourselves, unto ourselves, like what, what would we say? You know, will we be reserved? Right. You know, right, and right. So. That makes sense. Um, so I'm wondering, being that uh, you kind of started, uh, you know, on Sportscaster, then the transition to YouTube, and then obviously once you started going, um, uh, things must have started to pick up pretty quickly, especially with all the ideas and the content. Um, how did the family, you know, uh, receive, you know, you becoming this this new YouTube sensation and doing all these other things? It's, a, it's quite the time commitment. How did that affect like the family relationship? And, and uh, you know, I, I, I was basically saying, you know, how, how do they think about you as well? Like, ah, uh, you know, they're like, ah, uh, you know, th uh, that's just, that's just freezy. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Oh, like, yeah. oh, that's freezy. It's, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Cause the, one of the main reasons. So, so one of the reasons why it, this is, this is, um, um, why I could thrive in this space is because all of my, all of my kids are grown, right? I'm middle-aged, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, all my kids are uh, out of the house. You know, I think my youngest is like 22, 23 years old. So, you know, it, it's funny to them because they'll get, they'll see a reference from Pop Dukes. Like somebody be like, yo, man, I, I came across, it's funny, it's like it conversationally. They'll be like, man, I came across this joint that, man, um, Nick's wanna drive and it was like 10 people screaming at the top of their lungs. And my daughter be like, oh God, that's <laughs> that's my pop show. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So so and it's like to, to know that that um people can catch Blorn's tears internationally. Like you don't have to, this is not just it's a family affair that's not in one house. It's like a it's a family affair that's international. So when people see Uncle Freezy, everybody knows Uncle Freezy. Man, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, even, even better. I was in Atlanta, Georgia at a Knicks playoff game, right? Mm -hmm. Walking down the street, headed to a bar, and a crowd of people walked up on me and started chanting, blowing tears. They was like, blowing rich tears, blowing rich tears, blowing rich tears. And this guy came up and put his arm around me and took a selfie, like, yay, this is Uncle Freezy. And this, all this stuff is so new to me, right? Because I, I so, okay, so what people don't know, people that, don't, that, that have never seen me before, I am a large human being, man. I'm 6'5", I'm about 350, 355 pounds. So when most people see me, like before, Blowing tears, people would see me and they were like, oh my God, man, that dude is so intimidating. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you get that or not by being tall, but people, you know, oh my God, this dude. Um, matter of fact, the one time I met Ellen Iverson, he asked me if if I was a bodyguard. So I met Ellen Iverson in person. He was like, yo, you the bodyguard? And I'm like, no, I ain't no bodyguard. <laughs> Get out of here. 
Yeah, he like, he like this dude got an attitude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that was my <laughs> Allen Iverson. Thing. But anyway, anyway. But in, in Atlanta, people walked up to me. Dudes was walking up to me, man, um, putting their arms around me, taking selfies. Like, oh, my God, this is Uncle Freezy, blah, blah, blah. And so this new, this, this, and this, this happened in June. So all this stuff is still new to me, bro. All the, all right. of this stuff is still new. To, and the fact that people feel so comfortable with me that they could just come up and take selfies and they can chant and do all kind of stuff. It, it, it makes me think, man, that, that, you know, all this stuff is worth it. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. That's, that's cool. And I, I think, that that's that's what i would expect from you especially because i think you give off that vibe and it's 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 a real uh, i i don't know how to exactly describe it but it's just you're you're a, a personality that makes people feel comfortable and they can gravitate towards you and I, those those type of personalities those people are memorable so you know and relatable so right. you know thank you for being you man um sure. you know when when we first, uh, when myself and John first got involved in in podcasting and content creation, we didn't really know too much or what to expect, um, and we really didn't know about the Nick community on the whole. Like we got involved, we started by watching. Um, well, I started, should I say, by you know watching nothing but Nick's, and Sim was the first face I saw, and right. that gave me the idea. And I said, you know what, um, I'd like to do that one day. Um, and then as time went past, obviously, I, I saw Knicks fans TV um, and I, I would watch that show. And then when we really got serious, we were thinking about doing another type of show. Um, but uh, it wound up being like we said, you know what? We're, we're always talking about the Knicks anyway. Why don't we just put this YouTube thing together and, and, and uh, see where it goes? And at that time. Um, man, 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 Mr. Ron Cleveland was used to be on the Knicks fan TV show. He would call in and I didn't really know he had his own show. And then I saw it one day and I was like, wow, he's got his own show. You know what? Time is now. So let me do it. Right, right. Um, so the, the reason why I bring that up is because when we started to do the show, I started to realize how big this Nick community was like. There's so yeah. much out there going on that I didn't know about. And there was all these shows. And and so John came to me and he said, uh, dude, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, there's, it's a lot of, lot of stuff going on. But if you haven't checked out yet, he said, check out these two shows. He said, check out Die Hard, uh, Nick fans with Eru. Um, and, you know, now that's like, oh, hey, me and Eru, you know, he's mad he, cool. Yeah, shout out to Eru too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, me, he's my man now. Like, it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, and then he said, you got to check out Lawrence Tears with Uncle Freezy. I was like, Uncle Freezy? Yeah. Lawrence Tears? What does that mean? And then he right. explained it to me. He's like, yeah, it's really cool. And there's a bunch of different content. And I was like, okay, all right. So let me look. And then that was one day I, I looked at the show. And I'm next thing I know, I'm in the chat. And then, um, uh, you know, I couldn't really do anything at that point. But then I saw another show of yours. And I said, you know what? Let me jump in. And, 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 you know, just see if I can get on and talk a little bit. Um, and you were, you know, so great. Like you welcomed me and you, you, uh, you obviously allowed me to, to speak and, and talk my stuff about the Knicks. And I felt, it felt like a family. Um, so I understand when you say that about, you know, uh, about Sim and, and, and how it was when you first got on that show and, and, and being a part of that, because I felt the same way. So I bring that up because of the fact that, even though I know Sim used to have uh, different people on the show uh, and sometimes the numbers would go a little higher from your show, your numbers, like the people you have on the panel can go so high up to nine people at a time. And I was just like, how does he do this? Cause I have a different type of personality and I can probably do it for a little bit, but it's not necessarily my thing to, to be able to uh, manage so many different entities and personalities and you do it well. And I'm like, and you do it almost every show. And I'm like, how does he do this? So I wanted to ask you, like, how is it that you can, you know, share the screen with so many different personalities and be able to manage it and still get the content out the way you want to? And, and how, do you, how, how are you able to do well, that? The, well, the reason the, how, how I do it is, is, for one, 
the, leaders are going to be different. So if you want to do a, a YouTube channel, you have to be a leader of people, right? You have to you have to have that leadership thing in, in, in you, right? Because what happens is is um, say when say if you guys do live streams and you allow other people to come on, you got to be able to control who it is that you want to have come on, and and right. so it depends on on how you feel about that person. Are you going to direct them? <clears throat> excuse me. Ask them specific questions and know and trust they're going to give specific answers, or are you going to be the ringleader? Like like I run a circus and I know it, right? A three ring circus, right? Every ring is going to have a different thing going on with different people, right? I know that. And the people that tune in, they know that. And our, our, I guess what, what draws people in is like we're always on the edge of being a grease fire. And the draw is how can Uncle Freezy stop this from turning into a grease fire? So, <laughs> so it has people on the edge of their seat like, like such and such is mad. He not he's not gonna let Freezy talk, and and so and so that that's the draw. Um, how we do it is is not um, necessarily. Uh, uh, I don't want to take credit for us staying inside the rails or inside in this in this example inside the rings, but mm -hmm. um, um, but the thing we do is is trust that most people are really hardcore Knicks fans. You right. have to be, in order to be a, in order to want to get on, get into this grease fire, so to speak, you have to be a passionate Knicks fan and and want to have your say be heard. And sometimes what mm -hmm. we'll do is, is if two people can't control themselves, I'll, I'll move everybody off the screen and have them debate. And so we have this thing called the Lawrence Tears Debate League. It's kind of in hiatus right now because of, of, of the season and a lot of different shows going on. But mm -hmm. what I would do is isolate two people on the screen and let them shoot the fair one, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Go for what they know. Right. And the loser and, and I tell and the loser shut up. I'm like, listen, <laughs> right. listen, listen, you got to win this debate because if you lose, yeah, I'm gonna mute you. You know, and and so you know, me too for me, you know, and and so if they want to, some people want to do it, and other people realize, man, maybe what I was talking ain't really that important for me to debate somebody. You know, what I'm saying I just fall back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that's that's the draw. We are always we the, the you know the the Knicks at Night podcast and the Knicks Morning Drive are all it's always on the verge of being a twelve car pileup. You know what I'm saying? But right. but we try to navigate it where it's not so, but that's part of the draw to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and you definitely you definitely do it well, man. Uh uh I I I know that uh on our show we we uh when sometimes when we do post games, we get different people on. So but it's it's uh you know, maybe four or five people, not not too crazy, but and and, and then the personalities are pretty pretty lukewarm for the most part, but you get all types of personalities and multiple multiple people. So yeah, it's definitely kudos to you because you you yeah. definitely have a way of managing it. So yeah, man. And and the thing the thing about it is is um I really don't care who comes on the show as long as they two things right two things you're not going to do when you come on is is a number one if you whack i'm booting you immediately right if you whack you're gone you out of here that's the rule people know people you can ask all the Lawrence kids family listen man i've heard you say it before yes. yeah yeah if you whack you out of here period right and then secondly, I, you know, we we try to walk the line of being um, um, aggressive, but not disrespectful. We don't want we don't want people, you know, we don't want you want people calling people out of their name. With, or, right. or I don't even mind that, but I, I don't want it to be in egregious, uh, an egregious uh, disrespect towards people's backgrounds and all that stuff. I don't I don't I'm the HR of that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? If we get that, man, we, we move people out of here. But but if you just mad, I don't care. It's the internet. What's gonna what's you know what's the what's the worst that can happen? You gonna you gonna leave? <laughs> you know, right, right. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it, you know. So 
Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's that's how we manage it. Yeah, well, no, I mean, like I said, you have a way of doing it, and, and it works. And uh, yeah. So it's I've been called I've been called the 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 Vince McMahon of this, or the Dana White of <laughs> of Nick's universe. So <laughs> that makes sense. I, I I could go. I can get with that. Yeah. Um, so you know, in the past, you've joked with me about being the hard, hardest working podcaster and all this stuff, which is funny coming from you. Uh, the real hardest working podcaster out there with everything going on is definitely you, my man, because I don't know how you do it. I already went down the list of shows. Uh, it's it's a ton of content. And, uh, you know, I started watching you, you know, more recent than other people who have been, you know, uh, contributors to the show and just, uh, you know, fans of, of your shows. But I heard that these shows like were in existence and you know some of the content like the the actual show times used to go even longer so my question is how were you able to do all these shows and link these shows too with time frames you know could be from three to five hours on some shows like how are you able to do all of this content and still have you know some sanity and some your life has a level of normalcy like how are you able to, to manage all of that well, uh, in my in my professional career, in my professional career, I have done things such as be a portfolio manager of like million dollar properties and entities, right? Mm -hmm. So, and 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 dealing with portfolios, I manage multiple portfolios with multiple entities, and so it con it. So I'll give you an example. So I managed a portfolio for a guy. He was a ham and egger, right? He took mm -hmm. he took his 401k and bought some stuff. It was in his portfolio and he thought he was a priority. Right. But at the same time. I could I was managing portfolios of dudes with hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stuff in their portfolio. Right. And I had to mm -hmm. do all that had to do all the maintenance, like, you know, go through, make sure no stone stone was left unturned, like making sure um grass was cut at such and such property in Tampa, Florida and and Mesa, you know, Arizona and all these different things, make sure pipes and stuff, piping things were done in in the Detroit, Michigan area and all that stuff. So I had to but the 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 guy with the hundreds of million dollars of dollars things, he would he trusted me. He was like, hey, Uncle Freezy, listen. You hadn't done anything wrong yet, man. I'm making money hand over fist. You know what I'm saying? You just keep doing what you're doing. Just just email me with email my people with an update. Make sure you, you know, CC such and such and all of that so we can keep track. Make sure you send, you know what I'm saying, stats and things, you know, things that I use on the show. I, I was, right. So but the 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 guy that wasn't a millionaire, the thousandaire guy. Would call me every day, twice a day. Hey, how we doing? I was like, well, the grass didn't grow much today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he would be like, he'd be like, oh man, Uncle Freezy, you got jokes and blah blah blah, man. This is my man. Hey, bro. I was like, was the check on time last month? He's like, yeah. Hey, the check was on time, man. It was more than I expected. Okay. What what other questions you got? And he's like, uh, right. uh, 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 how you do it? And so I tell. Him, don't worry about how I do it, man. Just if if the end result is what you desire, then then you good. But 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 basically, to your point is, I used to manage um, hundreds of accounts at once, just doing all these different things. So when I you know I left that arena, right to do something else, managing Lawrence Tears is nothing. Because because I have a template for everybody. Rule number one, you better not be whack. Right? You better not be whack. Rule number and so and so what I would do is, is give me an example, the pod couple, right? So Cornerstone Kev came to me and said, Hey man, I'm thinking about doing this show with this guy, Sergeant Nix. It's like, okay, Sergeant Nix, I, I heard of him before. I saw him all on on Ryan Cleveland's show. What are y'all talking about doing? We just want to do a show. And so I was like, okay, you know, it's not that simple. And so he was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. And then um, I was like, well, tell, tell Sergeant Nix to call me. So Sergeant Nix came. Uh, he called me. He was like, yeah, we thinking about doing a show. 
was like, y'all thinking about doing your own YouTube channel? He's like, YouTube channel? What you mean? It's like, you got to have a platform, bro, in order for your show to exist. He's like, yeah, but... And so what we did is, is with those two, those two had instant chemistry. They were friends, and they have chemistry on the screen. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted to do a show. They didn't know what to do. And so what I did was I laid out a template for them. I was like, what's the name of your show? They're like, we don't have a name. It's the Cornerstone Cav, a.k.a. Star Child, a.k.a. Um, Shazam, and Sergeant Nix, a.k.a. G-Man for Life show. I was like, bro, you know that name as long as hell. Right. right? So he was like, yeah, we know. So I was like, I'm going to give you a name right now. Y'all are the pod couple. Bam. So it started right there. So we gave them a name. We gave them a concept. We gave them a, a template, a blueprint to follow. And every week I send them an email them and and they have their stuff ready to go before we get on screen. And that gives me enough time to do the animations mm-hmm. for their for their show. Like they'll send me the stuff on Monday. They come on Thursdays at 6 30. I work on their stuff Tuesday and Wednesday. I preview it to them during the day. When they come on, they follow this certain script. And, you know, and we just rock from there. And we do the same thing with, with all the shows. So that way, dude, because because it, to, in order to answer your question, we're organized. We're organized. Every I'm I, we're organized down to every every minute of their opening is scripted to every minute of their closing is 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 scripted like hey man you got three minutes and and if you go over three minutes i'm gonna come on the screen and cut you off and they're like no man uncle freezy you know what i'm saying that's whack man don't cut me and so they would come on the screen at first and go over three minutes and i would come on the screen to cut them off like hey man this was supposed to be three minutes and then they'd be embarrassed they'd be like he really did that and i'm like yep <laughs> yep yep we have to be organized because what happens is, is, you know, if the, you know, you got to make sure you do the same thing with everybody because you want them to be their real selves, but to understand right. that, that every show is a production. Like when you and John come on, y'all have to produce this thing. Somebody has to do the slides, the, the overlays, the thumbnail, the show topics, all of that. Somebody has to do that. And if, and right. if, and ideally, what I want wanted them to do is just show up and talk. So I would so I would send them the topics, and then they would show up and talk about them topics, and they would be themselves. They didn't have to do any. They don't have to do any production or all of that stuff. I'll just do that behind the screen, so it would be organized. Wow, well, I mean, listen, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and you know uh, that I, I probably should have expected something like that from you. I'm like because you know. You're a military man. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I should, this is probably the reason. This is the key. That's a little trick. You know what I mean? Military men. <laughs> there is there is beauty in organization in my mm. mind. There is beauty. Even though, even though I I do shows that are that are um the the, sh- the shows that I do are chaos. It's not really. Because when when I come on, say for the next one and drive. You'll see the thumbnail, and it'll just be something like today's thumbnail was was superhero, like there's a hero emerging, and so mm. what I generally do is get on and talk by myself for about twenty minutes about the topic, and then mm. that way I can ease the the viewers into a certain mindset, and then you know I open up the chat and all hell will break loose. Right, right, yeah. So being that you've kind of been doing this for uh, a little while now and you, you understand the ins and outs of, of, of what it takes and, and what to expect, um, thinking back to how it was when you first got into the game, uh, what would you say to yourself or to a new content creator that's just starting right out, you know, right out the gate right now? They're going to start the YouTube um, you know, channel tomorrow. Or it could be a young you or whatever. Uh, what would you say to that person that's thinking about starting and what what the you know how their approach or what to expect? You know, what would be your advice? 
be yourself. Yeah, that's the main thing. Be yourself. Right now, this planet has 7 billion, 700 million people on it, right? 6 billion people have access to internet, right? Um, and, and say for your niche, I'll use the Knicks for an example, right? The Knicks, the, okay, so the NBA has about 2 billion fans, right? Mm -hmm. The New York Knicks, uh, the, the, the New York tri-state area has over 40 million people in it, right? Right. Think about this. You can be yourself and be different, right? Because the thing about those 40 million people in the New York tri-state area, mm -hmm. all you need for your, say, short-term success is about a thousand people. And think about how small of a percentage that is compared to 40 million people. You can find, you can, you, to, short term success is about, short term success is about 100 subscribers. That means you're doing something. People are tuned into you, right? You just need some time to grow, right? Mm -hmm. If you get to 100 subscribers, you just need time to grow. That's all you, you just need exposure, right? But, but think about all those people that I just mentioned. And and two billion people use Google. I mean, you yeah, Google, right? Which is which is the parent company of YouTube, right? Right. So all you have to do is just be yourself. Keep putting out the stuff that 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 you feel comfortable with, and people will find you. You know, so it's just like being. It's like <clears throat> like with me, like 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 with me. I, I consider I show a bag of potato chips on the shelf in a grocery store. We don't mm -hmm. have to, that bag of chips doesn't have to go out and run in the streets to be found. People will come find us, right? Now we might have to change up the packaging, you know what I'm saying? So we stand out from the other bags of chips, you know right. what I'm saying? But people that are people that are searching will eventually find you. And if you're good, people will spread the word. And th that's just how this thing, that's just how this thing works. You know, it's it's one of those deals where um, you don't want to feel like you put too much effort into being to to changing and you know changing your logo all the time, changing the name of your show all the time, changing all the changes, change that for the people to fit. <clears throat> just be yourself. That's right. that's that's all you have to do. Just be yourself, and the people. <clears throat> the, the, um, I saw it on the YouTube algorithm one time. People that searched for Blarn's Tears, mm -hmm. like, like I think it was a, um, and I don't mean this as a disrespect, any disrespect to other shows, but um, at one point in the early spring, people searched the word Blarn's or the term Blarn's Tears on an internet more than they searched Nick's, right? And it was mm -hmm. because some people, because the word had got out that something crazy was happening on YouTube. And so it's the reason why, you know, it, people were searching Blarn's Tears and, and the thing about it, and I saw all the misspellings too. Like, 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 like YouTube was sending you all the, every day search all these terms. And so right. I they spelled Blarn's wrong and all the your tears wrong and all these things. Cause you know, tears can, you know, you, tear, you can spell tears more than one way. So, so, right. and so. And I saw the other YouTube shows on on there. I saw Blaza. I'm, I'm not gonna say their name out of respect to them, but the, but the percentage of the of the people that search for Nick's content was highest with Florence Tears, and that let me know that I was doing something right. right. I, the channel was growing faster than some of the giants that had been in the game already, and it's no disrespect to them because you didn't have they, a lot of people had already subscribed to their channels already. Right. So they didn't have to search for them because they already right. found them. Right. But they were searching right. for this new thing, which was Blarn's Tears. And and so mm. and, and so the thing about that is is once I saw that, I was like, my bag of chips is is, you know, people had found my bag of chips. They came mm -hmm. in the grocery store and they found me. And that's basically what YouTube is, man. It's like the it's like the online grocery store. You just have to have the the right packaging. You have to be good. 
and and all of that stuff be you know said so be at you know in the right place at the right time and and all that stuff and so if if you're and plus i'm a grinder you know i was doing the show every night seven days a week putting stuff out there putting stuff out there putting stuff out there and so people eventually Get, got so tired. Of, I, I figured they got so tired of dodging me. They gave me a chance, and then they liked it. <laughs> it, right. was like, it was like, like my pops told me one time. <clears throat> I was like, "Hey, pops, I'm gonna go take you get some wings. Take some wings. I want to go to the chicken place." And I was like, "Pops, you don't have to just go to Wilhelmina's or KFC or Bojangles or Roy Rogers." A golden skillet to get chicken. You can go to a place that only sell wings. And he's like, What's next? A place that only sell chicken breasts. And I'm like, no, Pops. No, no, <laughs> trust me. This this wings thing is a thing. He and he's like, Well, the chicken only got two wings. And it, it, it's uh, I'm like Pops. I, I, I get it. I get it. But but don't don't knock that. You know what I'm saying? Cause they gonna have, I was like, Pops, guess what? You can go in there and drink beer. It's like you could drink. Is this a bar? And I was like, kinda, but you could get other stuff too. And so the reason why the reason why I say that is because is this: don't knock innovation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like still and expands. Don't 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 um, try to be somebody else. Y'all be ourselves because you never know what's gonna take off. We never knew. You know, as somebody that's a little bit older than most of the people that watch our stuff, mm -hmm. you, you never knew that a all chicken wing place could be an all chicken place. Right. People don't right. get excited to go to KFC, but they do get excited to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's true. That's you, true. You know what I mean? So so, you know, just just stay, you know, if you have a niche, just develop it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be, you know, a burger joint. Right. Yeah. That's that's good advice, man. That that makes sense. Uh, uh, I always like how you break stuff down, Freezy. You always have good, good analogies and, and different and different things to, to point to. You're not you're not uh G Man, because G Man will give you everything under the hood, under the sun. It's right. an analogy, but Right. right. And, and so and that and that's the reason why <clears throat> that's the reason why I, I, I love G-Man so much It's because G-Man is going to give you an armful of gems all at once. And you're going to worry about all the stuff that you can carry. But then the ones that that later on, the ones that dropped on the floor that you couldn't carry, you pick it up and you're like, oh, that's what G-Man was talking about. Hmm. Yeah, right, G, G Man is going to give you more than you, more than you can carry, whether you like it or not. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so being, and I know that you must have encountered something, being that you have all these different content, all these different shows. You ever had one of those moments where you had something challenging uh, happen to you while you were trying to record uh, some content? Because I know firsthand, Uncle Freezy. Uh, it's happened to me recently. Let's just say that. So <laughs> I know yeah. how it can be. <laughs> yeah. So have you ever had anything that 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 uh, kind of happened to you like that that you had to kind of work around and deal with? Um, tech issues always happen. So tech issues are always going to happen. This is technology. It's not going to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I did have some personality stuff. I um, I used to do the the Knicks at Night podcast. That was my baby. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so I encountered a dude named Stephen Fox and shout out to Stephen Fox. Right. Right. So Fox was like, yo, are you doing all this stuff by yourself? Yes. He's like, let me help you. And I was mm. like, uh, mm, uh, I don't know, Foxy. This is this is my baby here. Right. I don't, I don't want to pass it off to to anybody else. I don't want anybody else to. He's like, nah, bro, I, nah, I got you. And then what happened was we used to co-host together. He would come on and help. He was so organized, more organized than me because I'm organized. Well, you know what? I would say this. I'm more organized than him. He is more disciplined in his organization than I am. Like, like okay. I'm willing, like I'm willing to, to, to um, um, go off script 
more than than he is. Right. Right. And and so this guy that was working for me slipped on a banana peel at work. I don't want to get into the specific because this dude is a jerk and he got me going through some. Mm-hmm. But anyway, 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 so um I had to so I had to step away from the Knicks at Night podcast and Stephen Fox took up took over for me and he ran it. And that was like an unexpected thing because I never wanted anybody else to control what it was that I was trying to do. And right. and it wasn't like and it wasn't like he was controlling it. He was more Stephen Fox was more of a caretaker of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and so I didn't I didn't really um um get it at first, you know what I'm saying? And and then, you know, but it wound up being good. But then Foxy left to, to do other stuff. And so and and so even with that, um what we did was I started grooming people to do the Knicks and I because of what I learned from Stephen Fox. And I'm mm. eternally grateful for, for what Stephen Fox did. He stepped in and did it by himself. He's just a pilot, you know, or whatever. And then and Foxy, Foxy left and you know, to do other things and, and much success to Fox. I see him doing stuff out there, man. He's doing a good job with stuff. Mm-hmm. So but <clears throat> but I wound up discovering this guy named Kev W, right? Kev W would come on and he wouldn't say anything. Just sit there. I'm like, Kev W, you got to say something. And so, Kev, so he was, you know, he would be there and, you know, talking and, and whatever. And he was like, hey, Uncle Freezy, I'll be right back. And he came back on. He had a hoodie on. And that was my moment. I was like, oh, it's Hoodie Kev. It's Hoodie Kev. It's Hoodie Kev. <laughs> And so I pumped it up so much. I think I said Hoodie Cab like 200 times in a row. And and Hoodie Cab became this persona, this person, the, this entity that was bigger than Lawrence Tears. Hoodie Cab was bigger than the channel. You, hmm. you know what I'm saying? And right. so and so he hosted the Nixon Night podcast. That was unexpected also. And and so what happened is is you know, people loved Hoodie Kev so much that they forgot that it was a Nixon Night podcast. They just tuned in to see Hoodie Kev because he was such a... Once I pulled him out of his shell, because he, by nature, I think he's quiet. But once mm-hmm. I pulled him out of, out of got him out of that, that box or so, man, he was probably one of, more, one of the more dynamic personalities um, in the game. So the unexpected wow. thing... The unexpected thing was not tech because, man, I've been in, I work for banks and mortgage companies and, oh, just every, the VA, everybody forever. So the tech stuff, no big deal. I know tech issues are going to happen. You know right. what I'm saying? But but in terms of, of the on-screen stuff, you kind of never know what you're going to, what you're going to get. So to answer to answer that mine was more so on screen stuff cuz i don't i don't deal with stuff like obs i don't do obs it's too much of a hassle um for for me because i'm trying to do multiple things and i'm trying to groom um um trying to groom um personalities um on screen personality i'm trying to groom the talent at the same time and so right. it's too it's too much for me to work on tech stuff and groom i think if you groom the, the on-screen personalities, then that'll shine through regardless of what technology you use. Okay. I respect that. That makes sense. I like I like the, the, the approach and the idea. So being that you, you have been able to uh, have, uh, you know, really good success with uh, so much different content, all these different shows, is there a specific, um show or anything that you you're really proud of like a favorite moment that happened um that took place that you say like uh that that was special like this is this is this was one this was a moment or like you know even if it's a show hmm. i would say i would say meeting the guys in person hmm. meeting meeting hoodie cab in atlanta meeting cp the artist in atlanta 
Mm. Um, meeting Uncle Fulio in, in Atlanta, meeting Jay Boogie in, in Atlanta, all of us getting together. And and so there were some there were some moments where all of us were together and people were like, hey, y'all look familiar. Where do I know y'all from? And so so those those little those so we would have like the 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 um the shared the, the the shared moment of people recognizing us for something that's bigger than ourselves, and right. we kept and we kept that moment to ourselves. Like we took pictures and stuff, and we kept those got a lot of those pictures and stuff, um, um, in our phones and stuff, and didn't share them because those moments are like the special moments. Like you know, like when you get on and it's a three ring circus, and the the lion is trying to eat. The 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 this, this sword swallower, and you're like, oh my god, how did the lion get in this ring? I'm trying to keep him over here, and then <laughs> the clowns are in this car. They don't want to get in the car. Somebody they are professional now, and now you know what I'm saying all this stuff going on, and and so you have these these special moments that you know you're just sitting with a bunch of of content creators, and y'all not content creators in that moment. You're just people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then and then somebody walk up and notice you as content creators. And you're like, Yeah, yeah, this 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 like, like this is a, a special moment here. As far as on screen, um, I don't know if we've seen it all yet. I think the best is yet to come. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that that makes sense, man. Uh and and I, I would expect that. You know the way you've been doing things and and everything that that has come uh to fruition so far uh, i would expect that there's going to be more and more things to come in the future that we can all look forward to um being that you know i i can't i can't not ask you this because i mean listen you know this is this is what we do right i'm wondering what do you think about the state of our current new york knicks mm. Mm. I think we're a mess. I I don't see. Yeah, I I don't. I I think everybody that comes in as team president makes the promise that they're going to do such and such, and then they get here and realize this is New York, man. You can't just come in here and say this is what you're going to do. It's like it's like being a president of the United States on the campaign on the campaign trail. You say a lot of stuff and then you get in the office and you realize. Can't do none of it. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because of such and such circumstance and such and such circumstance. And you realize that you have to be <clears throat> more of a politician than the go getter that you were. When you made these promises, right, right. So every 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 team president the Knicks have had said, "We want to establish a culture of sustained winning." The rumors are always, "In two years, we're going to go out and get such and such superstar when he becomes a free agent." Every mm -hmm. season, every season, is such and such star is disgruntled. There's a trade coming. You wait and see. This front office is going to pull off such and such trade. Right, and it and, and the thing is is and and uh, here's here's a, here's the kicker, the the biggie. Our best player, something's wrong with our best player. He doesn't do such and such and such and such well. And that's every team, that's every team president, every front office, every right. every regime, every five year stretch, whether it's Randall or Mello or Marbury or Houston or Ewing or Michael Ray Richardson, Bernard King, oh. or Willis Reed towards the end of his career. It's Knicks fans nitpick the, the current star to death. Right? And and, and the reason why they, they nitpick the star to death is because the front office has never been able to figure out a way to surround that star with more talent. So every night that star goes out there, he's overwhelmed by by the the opposing teams and and they don't win a championship and the slightest thing that he does wrong Knicks 
the, the slightest thing he does wrong, you have 40 million people watching it and they and they want to, they want to critique him. Mhm. You know. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh it, it's it's uh think it's, about it's how a think problem. about how the mellow years ended. Remember how the mellow years ended? Right. Right. Yeah, and it was only seven years. It wasn't like Mello was drafted here and he played 15 seasons. It was seven seasons. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, this 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 uh Nick franchise has a lot of uh a lot of stuff that turns sour. Quickly. quickly uh i think that has a lot to do with uh nick fans in general the expectations are always too high uh unreasonable the, yeah unreasonable there, there you go there you go because we always want we want everything we have that instant gratification thing and um i think i don't know if it's all uh about necessarily the knicks or maybe it's a new york thing um, you know, this area has been spoiled. I'm a Met fan. Uh, uh, I believe I you are as well. Fan. Yes. Right. But for those who, because there's a lot of Yankee fans that are also Nick fans. Yes. Those Yankee fans have been spoiled for many years. You know, many they've, years. they've had a lot of success. Right. Um, and I think sometimes, uh, and, and even if you're a Giant fan, not currently, but for a while, the Giants had a lot of success. Giants had right. success. Yankees had so there was so much right. success to go around. You you definitely cre- it creates a, a type of animal, and we haven't got away from that animal yet. Right. It's it's there. <laughs> right. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to ask you. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit. At least I brought it up. But so, how do you feel about this current state of the Nick community? Uh, uh, what do you think about what, what we got going on in this whole this whole big thing? It's it's a monster. Uh, uh, oh, the Nick's universe. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love I love the Nick's universe, bro. Because because it, it is funny, and, and I use an example for the kids that'll be watching. Like when I first started out, I had this rocket that I wanted to take to the moon. Because the moon was the biggest thing that I used to see in the sky at night, right? Mm. And I was like, if I could only get a rocket and go to the moon, that'd be the best of everything. And so I make this YouTube channel. I build my little rocket. And finally, my rocket takes off for the moon. And about a third of the way to the moon, I notice that what I left behind is getting smaller and smaller. But what I'm headed towards is getting bigger and bigger. Right. And then I look off to my left and right and notice that there are other dots in the sky. There's a Knicks fan TV over here. And there's a CK2K over here. And there's a, a Terry and Trey over here. And, and there are other content creators just showing up on the radar. There's a man, man, man. It's the next little small speck in the sky. is getting bigger and bigger all the time. And then there's a Legion of Knicks over here. Legion, Legion of Knicks podcast started off small, getting bigger and bigger over there. And so when I when we took off, we were like, all we wanted to do was get to the moon. And about uh, when you know in your journey, you realize it's more out here than the moon. Mm-hmm. You know, like like and for for example, I get requests to do other people's stuff all the time. I get DMs mm-hmm. all the time from from others that are are starting out or established, and they want they they're like, "Hey, Uncle Freezy, listen, come on the joint." I'm like, you know, if, if they're whack, I'm like, mm, "Man, maybe not right now, maybe later." But mm-hmm. if they got some stuff, you know, what I'm saying, if if they got some real stuff going on, I'm like, sure, whatever time, whenever you're ready, let me know the time, and and I'll be there. You know, what I'm saying. Right. But um, but if you whack, like if you just want to take advantage of an opportunity, like I got I got Uncle Freezy on, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, then I'm like, hey, man, now may now may not be the time. Um right. or if their technology is whack, like they want to come on, they don't have a camera, or they microphone muffled, or they don't have organized topics. I'm like, so so what are we coming on for? Hey man, I just mm-hmm. want to talk to you. Eh, well, I got shows that, that I do that anyway. You know what I'm saying? So but anyway, but, but the point that I'm getting at is, is this universe, Nick's universe is so big 
that that you kind of have to be careful what you say now in a sense because you never know who you're going to encounter in this universe. Like I encountered John down at the Macri, who I feel like is is one of the dopest dudes going, right? Right. One of the, one of the dopest dudes going. What he's doing with um, mixed film school since he took over for JD, in my opinion, is incredible. You, you know what I'm saying? You know, do I, do I want to pattern our stuff after that? Maybe not. But I like the fact that it's such a different thing. You know what I'm right. saying? It's, there's a, a newsletter, a podcast, and a live stream. I think that's right. dope. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. And, yeah. you know, a guy like Jonathan Macri, who I did have a chance to chop it up with for a little bit, it was short because timing wise, but uh, yeah, definitely. I, I love his content as well. And hopefully uh, have a chance to get him on here and, and, and be able to, to get a little bit more in depth into to what we got going on as well. Uh, but we'll see. So I've only got one more question really left. Uh, and that question is a little open ended. You may not want to answer it directly, but you can answer it indirectly because obviously, when you hear the question, you'll understand. Yeah, we we ain't really we, we, we ain't really afraid of nothing, bro. It's the internet. <laughs> no, I but mean, you might you might be. This question is more of like it, it makes sense to be indirect about it. It's just okay. I still want to ask it because you know people want to know, and and then maybe there's something you can say. So, is there anything that um, you wanted to do? but haven't had a chance to do as of yet like an idea or uh uh you know something that that you've you've had on your bucket list that you want to accomplish that hasn't happened yet in the content world or or, or something you want to get to later now like i said you don't have to specifically get into it because you don't want to give your idea away but is there something like that or anything you have on the horizon that maybe you like ah oh, this is Bruh. one day man <laughs> right i ain't gonna lie to you bro I, I'm not afraid of anybody, right? I, I fear none when it comes to this game, mm-hmm. right? Because I, I feel like I feel like we all have our own measure of talents and such, right? And and you know, if if I have an idea and somebody uses that idea, they better than me. So what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back and work and try to be better than them. I like competition. I think the competition. Is what drives people. Now, the idea that I have is this. Hey. The Freezy Awards. I like I had, that. I hadn't had the opportunity to do it. Notice this is a teardrop with blue and orange fire on the inside. Right? I see what you're doing there. Yeah, this is like this that. is this is a teardrop with blue and orange fire. I call it blue orange fire. So this is this is a tear with blowing fire on the inside. So what we'll do in 2022, once we get all the shows, all of our shows running, like because what I want to do is do about have them do at least about 20 or 30 shows. And then what we'll do is is um, set up a, a show on the channel. It'll be like the Academy Awards style show. And I'll ask Ron and John from Still Knicks fans to come on. And and do a category, say you know, um, you know the the best Lawrence Tears show based on voting and polling on the channel, and then you guys will will say you know name the the nominees, and then one of y'all will say the winner, and then we'll send one of these, we'll send one of these to a Lawrence Tears winner, right? And who mm-hmm. knows. Say, um, best comment or best segment um, on a Lawrence Tears um, on a Lawrence Tears show goes to Ron and John from Still Knicks fans, and I'll send I'll send one of the UPS one of these to your house. You know, what I'm saying and it looks better in light, so it looks better. I don't know if y'all can you can see it, but it I can, yeah, like- I could kind of see it. Yeah, but I could kind of see the blue and orange fire. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. The blue, yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. That's dope. And- That's a dope idea. Yeah, and and so so we got that we got that idea going. That'll probably um, be in twenty twenty two. But we also have this. Hold on for just a second. Problem. Also have this. 
Oh, is that a Blorence Tears belt? This is the Blorence Tears Debate League Championship belt. Or it's upside down. This is the Blorence Tears Debate League Championship belt. Wow. So, so we're going to get started with this probably in about, about a month. And what we're going to do is take all you know-it-alls that swear you know everything about the Knicks <laughs> and put you in a, in a cage match with another person that knows it all about the Knicks. And the winner, the winner, whoever whoever comes out, we want to put a 12-man field together with, with real people, a 12-man mm. field together. And whoever is the winner of that, I'm going to UPS that belt. After I get your name inscribed on it, I'm going to take it and get your name inscribed on it and send that belt to your address so you can have that belt forever. Wow. Forever? Forever. I was thinking maybe they get to hold on to the belt for like a no. year until you do no. it. Wow, forever. No. Okay. No. No, they get to have it. They, wow, they, get to, cool. they get to have that thing, man. I walked around with it in Charlotte, North Carolina, right? And people walked up to us. They were like, hey, champ, where's that belt come from? And I was explaining, like, I have a a, a Lawrence Tiz channel. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Did they think you was Bam Bam Bigelow? Oh, somebody. They thought I was. <laughs> we, were, we were in front of this this bar named Rip in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we and and this guy walked up to me. He was like, hey, man, I saw all your stuff, man. I love your moves. I know he was drunk. I knew he was, I knew he was drunk because I don't have no moves, bro. I'm not a boxer or MMA <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I used to box a long time ago, but I don't do that stuff. Then. That was 20, 30 years ago. But, but you know, it's like, yeah, man, I saw all your stuff, man. I love you, champ. Can I take a picture with you? And I was like, no, get to a drunk behind. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, man, so those are the ideas that we got coming up. If people bite those ideas, you know how you, know how you get you know, people, you, your street cred from being the original. You right. know what I'm saying? Like how James Brown is is the original, is the originator of, of a lot of hip hop beats. People still right. like, used to still a lot of James Brown, a lot of funky drama. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But but um um yeah, man. So that's what we got in, in the pipeline. What I also like to do is is connect with other Knicks content creators and do more Knicks related stuff, but not for the Knicks themselves. Because the Knicks would be fine. James Dolan is financially James Dolan is okay. Right. Yep. But Knicks fans, we wanna we wanna um um give out more experiences. Mm -hmm. Like get get do more stuff where Knicks fans can enjoy being a Knicks fan in a community, in a family, like you know what I'm saying? So right. we wanna do more stuff like that, but we have to <clears throat> we'll have to um <clears throat> excuse me figure out the logistics of all that stuff and how to pay for it and and, mm -hmm. and that stuff you know so you know that's that's about that's about it from there no i mean that, no that's those are great ideas man uh i'm looking forward to, to to seeing that that's really cool um and uh listen i i appreciate you man i think uh, you were really a, like a, you know, us starting this whole thing out and me like watching your content, you were a breath of fresh air for me. And I thought one of the greatest things, and I think I mentioned it to you already, like from our experience and our encounter was how open and welcoming you were to me. And obviously it goes back to you, like you said, not being afraid or, um, worried about competition or, you know, you feel, you're confident in what you do. And no matter what, if someone else does it, you know, they ain't doing it the way you do it um, or whatever it is like. And because when I, I remember when I first when I first was able to speak on your show, like I was talking about different things. And then you had mentioned like, oh, so what's your show? What's going on with it? You know, where, where can we find it? And, I, I, you know, and, and when you said it to me, you were like, I'll oh, put it in the chat. And, and when you said put it in the chat, I was like, what? Because there was so from being on YouTube, everything I would see is like. These are the no nos. You never, you know, self uh, promote. Don't don't put this in a person's chat. Like you'll get banned. You'll get this. And and then when you said that, I was like a breath of fresh air. I was like, wow, right. I, I I didn't expect that. And I was really surprised. And I definitely appreciative 
And I, I thank you for doing that because I know that there's definitely some fans of yours that have become fans of ours that still Nick fans. So I, I definitely thank you for that, Freezy. Or fans of Nick's. So and, and like what I explained to Ron Cleveland, right? <clears throat> so when Ron started his channel, he used to call me and ask me stuff all the time. And the contents of the conversation, I ain't going to get into that, right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, Ron, listen, we fill in sandbags in the desert, bro. We fill in sandbags in the desert? All this sand out here? Why, why do I need to hog all this sand out here? We fill in sandbags in the desert. The desert is full of sand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing with Nick's content creation is we should be in a mindset that <clears throat> YouTube and Nick's fandom is about two things. It's about education and entertainment, right? So, so the key is, as long as if you're a Nick's content creator and you're watching this, make sure that you educate and entertain at the same time. Right. Because the reason why people tune into platforms like this mm -hmm. is for one or the other. And most of and a lot of times both. They want to be educated, right. educated. They want to learn something new and be entertained. Whether whether you drive their emotions, you know, one way or the other, whether you, you know, um, have them um, stirred up emotionally about something or if you make them laugh. Either way. Right. That's that's what they tune in for. They tune in to be entertained. So as long as you do that, then you'll be fine. Just don't be whack. Right? Just don't come on just the Knicks fans. They don't want, they don't want to hear that. Right. You know what I'm saying? We already we already have ESPN for that. And a lot of Correct. the ESP, a lot of the ESPN viewers are stopping, stop they stop watching ESPN and watch us. You, you know what I mean? Yep. And so it's it's one <clears throat> so it's one of those deals where, you know, if you're doing it. Do them just just do just do what you feel okay with, and understand the growth is gonna be um, organic. That makes sense to me, man. That that I you know I really like I said I really like uh, the way you think, Freezy. Uh, I think you have um, you know your mindset is is what I would hope a lot of people you know would feel, but obviously that's not. You know, that's not reality. Everybody's got different personalities and they look at things differently. But the fact that you don't feel threatened is what makes you so welcoming. And and, you know, it's 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 a comfort like, you know, it, it allows you to just be you and not worry about other things. So therefore, when someone approaches you, you can just you can be who you want to be and not have to put on a facade. You don't have to feel like, oh, this is a new content creator. Yeah. Maybe he's just trying to get to know me to do this. Or maybe he's just, you know, you have all these questions that run through your mind. You don't have to do any of that because that's right. not something that you're worried about, which is no, great. No, I ain't, worried, I ain't worried about that because what, what, what we realize, what I realized in life, and, and, and this is what I learned um, about 15, maybe 20 years ago. I was hanging out with with a couple. They had a lot of dollars in their bank account. Bro. These dudes was millionaires, right? Mm -hmm. One dude was born into it. And his pops had cut him off and he had to learn how to make his own money. And the other dude came from a trailer park selling headstones. He was like, he used to tell, he used to sell headstones first, like call the headstone right on the spot right there for you. And he sat on the side of the road and then he took that headstone business and made it into a multi-million dollar property management business, right? Sitting there with them. At the bar, they was like, well, Uncle Freezy, what does your portfolio look like? Like, it don't look like nothing. I don't have nothing in it. They were like, well, what do you own? And I was like, man, I don't own nothing. You don't own your car? No, I'm still paying the bank. You don't own your house? No, I'm still paying the bank. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. And so <clears throat> they, would, they were sitting there over a few drinks. They were telling me about how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that. I wasn't thinking about none of that stuff because I had little kids. And, and at the time, I wasn't willing to risk my money because I had to take care of kids, right? And so while we were there, though, you could see the difference in how these two millionaires, and they probably had about the same wealth, about $200 million, something like that, right? How they interact. The guy 
that had the million dollars his whole life was looking for the party. Like, mm-hmm. hey, what are y'all doing over there? And he was, you know, go over there. And, and, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. and the guy that, that made it from the trailer park doing the headstones, the party would come to him. Mm. Right? Right. And people was like, well, how come people, how come y'all keep coming over here? What kind of beer are they serving? What kind of wine are they serving over here? No, they serving the same beer, the same wine, the same food. The dude here, though, he's charismatic naturally. Whereas mm-hmm. the other dude, when people come around, he's like, yeah, you know, the Ferrari I got last week didn't even come with the package that I liked. And I had to send it back. Right. And I was like, bro, I ain't never even seen a Ferrari in real life. And that would make him laugh, right? That would make him laugh. And he'd be like, you never seen a Ferrari, Uncle Freezy? No, I no. You know? And, and so and so, with, with this one guy, couldn't comprehend is why this guy right here people liked him Mm -hmm. and it was because this guy was natural right so the thing about the thing i'm getting at is is as long as you got a natural thing going on it don't matter what your bells and whistles are it don't matter what your graphics on the screen and all that stuff look like and all that it's like ron cleveland ron cleveland is naturally charismatic so it doesn't matter what his overlays look like all these bells and whistles on the screen Ron Cleveland is charismatic. People gravitate towards him. So no matter what, how you, no matter how fancy OBS gets and all that stuff, if you ain't charismatic, bro, people ain't gonna like you. You know what I'm saying? And trust me, it's it's YouTube channel, it's Nick's channels out there right now, right? Nick's, I mean, they all fancy, all kind of fancy names and graphics and all that stuff, and mm-hmm. I see them out there, right? But they don't have the viewership of a plain old streamyard. Ron Cleveland because Ron Cleveland's joint was he was charismatic and I think I fall into that group because I'm more un, unassuming like I don't I don't want I don't want to be the man I don't feel like I have to be the man I feel like this Nick's family thing should be about family I like that man I like that that's you know I would expect nothing less from you Uncle Freezy that's 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 who you are to me, man. That's how I see you. So and, and, and Ryan sense. and and Ryan, if you're watching, I had to call you out, bro, because people have most people have never seen Ferraris in real life. <laughs> Ryan, and Ryan, if you watch it, Ryan, it's real. He I still got his number in my phone. Real real good dude, but he's he, when you he just didn't. I don't want to get into it because I don't want him. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Well, uh, listen, it, it's been a pleasure having you here with me, Uncle Freezy. Uh, you know, apologize. Did, if, did I did if, I talk uh, you to death? Did I did I talk no, you to No, no, you him? you you were great. I mean, listen, you were fantastic. And 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 every interview that that I'm going to do, uh, I expect them all to be different. They're all gonna have their own gems that come out of it. And I wouldn't be interviewing you if it wasn't be it, it's my pleasure. So I thank you for being here. I wish you much much success with all your your future plans and ideas so uh thank you once again for being here uh and thank you for bearing with me i know i had some uh some uh, technical difficulties getting this whole thing up and running but hopefully it wasn't too bad and uh hopefully the fans out there tuning in hopefully you're able to see it and digest all of the good information that uncle freezy is giving to all of y'all um and it also gives you a little insight uh if you're just a fan of, of him and his his content about who he is and how he thinks. So I think that's also one of the, you know, the other valuable pieces that you get out of this whole process. So, and I thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Uncle Freezy, anything, any last words you want to say before you get out of here? And where can, and where can people find you, by the way? Um, you could find me on YouTube. Um, I have a couple channels or three different channels. So there's Lawrence Tears. Um, we have a, a new one that we're starting up called Huddle Up where we're just going to talk about everything sports and a lifestyle channel called Bob's and stuff. That's my, my pet project right now. And you can find me on Twitter um, at big freezy. Right. And and I'm around, I, I'm a, I'm around. I'm, I'm not hard to find it. Just, just search uncle freezy on, on, you know, Google uncle freezy and you'll be able to find, find our stuff. So 
But um, um, yeah, that's that's it for the most part. We don't we don't hide from anybody. We're we're out front, and and that's where we like to stay. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Once again, thank you for joining me. Salute to you. I, I appreciate you. Uh, and and we'll we'll definitely be chopping it up in the future, uh, because like I said, I I. I, I like to keep good people around me, and, and you, you definitely want to be good you, ones. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Salutes, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, catch you on the next one.